Yeah. Okay, so uh, like working towards something and then feeling depressed afterwards, uh, and that's actually uh, that's actually uh, that happens a lot, especially with workaholics uh, and very goal orientated people. And uh, so he here's the here's the thing, uh, and actually it's a, it's a really a really good point to, to know that uh, the ego is structured in trying to get uh, an external fix, you know, happiness from an external outcome, mm -hmm. you know. So, and, and uh, so I'll take it back, and this is, I mean, I love repeating this, and I think the, uh, to repeat this over and over again is, is uh, one of the most amazing bits of spiritual truth to hear. Uh, the ego won't like it, but it's good to hear it anyway. So my teacher, Muji, uh, referred to his, his teacher, Ramana Mah uh, Maharishi. Uh, so, like, if you, if you want something, then you have, a, you have a thought that's activated within your ego, that you want something. And so, uh, and when you get the thing that you want, mm -hmm. then the ego is like... The ego st uh, goes silent because you've got the thing you want now. Now, now, it, now it stays quiet, and when it stays quiet, it's like your ego goes silent, and you get a you get a connection to the self. You get a connection to God, so because it's now silent. You see, so you get a spiritual experience when you get the thing that you're you're chasing. But then, after a while of the ego being silent, it goes. It needs more or it needs something different, and then you're unhappy again. And this is the whole thing with the how the, how, what creates, especially if you really want something, then, um, so let's say I've got a work project on, a really big work project on, and I, it's like, and I'm thinking that when I finish this project, it'll be so amazing. So that means, and I'm really obsessed that I have to do a good job and I'm gonna work really, really hard, that will mean that I'll have a really inflated ego. It's like I'm working all the time, mm -hmm. and it'll be like it'll be like the, the the ego inflation is going like this, really, really a lot. And so, really, when I'm like this and I'm working to achieve a target or a goal, I'm in a state of unhappiness. Yeah, because you know I'm like this. I'm you know I have to achieve this thing, and I'm working really, really hard. So I'm really in a state of distress. And when I finally achieve it. Now this could be a work project, or it could be like wanting uh, a boyfriend to, to behave a certain way, or it could be to have more money in the bank, it doesn't really matter what the outcome is. But then if I get it, then suddenly the ego stops because you've got the thing you want. Mm -hmm. and, and because it's silent, you get a connection to God, you, get the, you go to the observer, you get the sunlight of the spirit. So you have this spiritual experience and you feel really, really like happy. You got it, like it's done. You did all that work, or you got the job, or you got the goal, or you got the boyfriend, or you got some money in the bank. So, but then after a while, because it, it's an ego chase, and you inflate it for all that time, and it stays silent, then it's gonna reinflate after a while. And then you'll feel, again, you feel, you may feel depressed, or you may have a come down because you got the thing that you wanted and you were happy, but that happiness was because it stayed quiet for a while. And so you can, so you can have these things like uh, depression. Uh, uh, also people who are in addiction, you know, they, they'll do a thing over and over again and the high gets less and less for a less and less time. And then they may go into places like depression because it's like the thing that they're, you know, they're not getting the reward from the thing that they're doing. And so the, the time that the ego gives you for a little bit of relief gets less and less. Uh, and then, you, you, you know, depression is like um, feeling like you're losing the thing that you wanted that should give you happiness and is not giving you happiness. And so you're cut off from the source of happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, so like, let's say, like, if I spent like a year on a work project, and uh, I get and the project becomes successful, I might get high for a few days, 
but then, but then I might get depressed afterwards. It just won't last, you see. And let's say I find out that I can never do another project again because I think another project would be the thing that could save me. Then it's like you'd be depressed forever because you can never be happy again because you can never do another project. Or if you fixate on a, on a, a Mr. or Mrs. Wright, you know, and you think, like, if I can only get Mr. or Mrs. Wright, and then, you know, they get run over by a car. <laughs> yeah, right. And it was like, one day if I get Mr. or Mrs. Wright, then I'll be happy forever. Mm -hmm. But this is the only one that's got happiness in it, you know, this Mr. or Mrs. Wright. Then if they die, then you're going to be, you're going to be depressed because you can never be happy again. Because you've projected happiness is in this one person. Or if it was in any if it was in any person, in, in, let, let's say, you know, you, uh, like a virus comes and kills all the opposite sex, you know, so you'd be like, you know, you'd be like, oh, there's no men or women left in the world. So then you'd be depressed for the rest of you. You go, there's no point to, there's no point to live, you see. I can't, I'll never have a mate. So you'd just be depressed, you see. There's no point to living. Where is it? It's just as crazy as people who have phobias. Exactly, good point. We're on camera, but. Uh, We're on camera? Yes. Too late now, anyway. You didn't say anything, but. I um, didn't realize we were on camera. We're on camera. Oh, well. It was a crazy example. But it's just, it's just the, the illustration that if you project happiness into something outside of yourself and you think you lose that thing, then you become depressed. Yeah. Uh, now, what's the opposite of that? What if happiness is found uh, from, uh, from the spiritual connection on the inside? What if happiness comes from the observer, you see? What if happiness is in the observer? And every time you go into the ego and think happiness is outside of you, you become subject to depression, you see, because if happiness is always on the inside or you're in the observer, then you can never ever be depressed, you see. Like if someone says like, oh, there's, there's an economic crisis, there's no jobs, you still wouldn't get depressed because the source of happiness is inside. Or if it's like, um, uh, there's, no more, there's no more eligible partners in this country, mm -hmm. You, you still wouldn't get depressed because happiness is on the inside. So if there's no money, if there's no uh, partner, uh, if, um, you know, whatever it is, it hard, still wouldn't matter. Pun? Hard Brexit. Okay. If there's a hard, yeah, hard yeah. exit. You know, <laughs> what, if, what if there was no more patisseries or no more bread in, in the world? <laughs> so, you see, like some people might get depressed. There's no more bread, what's the point of living? You see, so or there's no more lemsip or whatever it is. So, 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 some people would get, some people would get depressed, and other people would be like, it's fine, you know, like the source of happiness is wherever I go. So that that's the thing with that. And um, so, how do you keep, you know, in terms of routine, whatever reaffirms throughout the day that the source of happiness is on the inside will be an anti-depression, an anti-depression remedy. So it's like, even if you're doing like heavy work projects, or, uh, you know, if you'd like to do prayer meditation, or go to the observer, or sit with your feelings, you're trying to connect and reaffirm that the source is within, you see. And then you'll stay recharged. Because if you go into your, if say you do every half an hour, you do, you do, you go to the observer, or you do a little bit of meditation, or you cancel, your, I, you know, I cancel my belief that happiness is in achieving this, this uh, project. I'm an infinite being. And then you do the, you do the work. Then you can happily do the work, but not have your happiness dependent on the outcome, you see. So one of the things in life is not to allow your ego to get away with the source of happiness is outside of yourself. You do not want to do that. Because, you know, can you be happy with not much money? Can you be happy without a certain food item? You know, can you be happy with, you know, if, 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 if your boyfriend goes out with somebody else, can you still be happy? 
You can be happy if you keep reminding yourself and keep connecting on the inside to the observer and the thing. And don't allow your ego too long to buy a false idea that happiness is outside. Mm -hmm. Then you can like, you know, that, then you can, it's a win-win because you can finish your project uh, but still be happy before the project's ended and be happy after the project's ended. Otherwise, if the project's ended, you'll be subject to depression because actually nothing can give you, on the outside of you, can give you continuous happiness. Mm. It's got to, like, you've got to have a tail off. You know, the idea, like, I was a, I was a food addict, come from a food addiction, this would be like, is there such a thing as, like, now, food addicts are, when you become addicted to the idea that the source of happiness is outside of you, you're going to be very miserable. Because it would be, it'd be like the thing, like you have to eat constantly throughout the day because happiness is found in food. You know, that's like a food addict. It's like, you know, and you'd have to make sure that you've got enough donuts and that you live near a supermarket and that, yeah. Well, that's how serious. I did. This is true for This is true. This is true. And you've got to make sure you have enough food on you in your bag and there's enough food in the fridge because there might not be enough donuts left in the supermarkets. So you have to have extra donuts to, to do it. So, so it's like because the source, the source of happiness is in the donut. That's true for an addict. You know, and an addict will go into compulsion. You know, they'll, be ter they'll go into like a phobic response if they haven't got a supply to, of their drug. This is true. They'll go into absolute yes. panic attack. They'll sweat. They'll, they'll have heart palpitations, like they're going to die. It's like, I have to get to the supermarket now, I'll, I'll die. You know, it's a bit like that, you know. And, you know, or if, it, if it's like, a, like a people with love addiction, like if, if their partner goes, they, you know, they'll be suicidal. You know, it's true, they go suicidal. It's like, oh my God, he's left me for another person. There's no point to living. I think I'm going to go to, off the bridge and jump off. That, you know, the source of happiness is projected into a human being yes. and they'll actually commit suicide or, or have to go to like a 12-step fellowship where people will have to try and stop them from committing suicide because they projected happiness outside. So, mm. so you know, it's an illusion that the source of happiness is outside of you. So if you just keep doing, if you keep having a routine, I think, you know, even a 12-step, you know, like a, a morning... I think, you know, getting on the knees in the morning, doing some cancelling of beliefs of God did not create something, it's not real, and then having a, a watch reminder, or going to the observer regularly throughout the day, or watching Muji, and then like a little nightly routine as well, it could be a review of the day, and it could be some cancelling of beliefs, but don't project, you know, you always, one of the things with doing this work is not to let your, your head get into a big attachment, mm. that something outside of you is important. You know, you know, like the Course in Miracles talks about specialness, but you know, it's importance. Like if a, if a project becomes very important, if a boyfriend becomes very important, if money becomes very important, even the health things and, and the life of the body, you don't want to make that important either, because that will like cut you off from grace. Mm. So it's like, oh my, you know, like I have to keep the body alive will be, that, that, that's making something very important. You don't want to make it important. Even if you've got symptoms, you don't want to make them important. You want to make them meaningless. Because you're losing the identification and then you go back into the, into the formless. Or if you go into the observer of the, of the attachment, then it will dissolve the attachment. Because yeah? mm -hmm. in the observer suddenly, oh, it's all right, you know. Because like, when you're in the observer, the source is with you, so you're, you know you're safe forever. And it doesn't even matter, you know, like if you're in the observer, even if the body falls off, that wasn't you anyway. So your, your, your life is eternally guaranteed. It's only if you lose, if you go into your attachment, your identification, then you go into fear. Because you, you've, you've ascribed the source, you've ascribed that uh, something is needed for your survival which cannot be the source of your survival. Like anything in the realm of limitation and form, cannot be the source of your, in, your eternal survival. Because it can't, because it's finite, it's limited, it's transitory, it's coming and going. So you don't want to sort of do that. But also the thing as well is that, you know, the higher your level of consciousness, the more you're in the eternal, the, the, the infinite, the formless, or in the observer, you know, the, 
when you're one with the universe, the universe will take care of you because you're one with it. And the more you identify with limitation, the more you have to experience a world of limitation. Because it's just, just, you know, so you just want to not allow, you know, you want to be able to function and do your jobs and do big projects, but you don't want to allow your ego to get away with trying to get, like, satisfaction out of something, like get, a, get happiness from your project. Your happiness is inside, but you want to be able to do the project, but not have it be your life depends on the project. Mm -hmm. Then, then, you know, happiness can never abandon you. But if as soon as you let the ego make it something external, then you can have the ups and downs, like depressed. So that's the best way never to be depressed, is to, like, know that, is to keep affirming to yourself that your infinite internal, ne the, the observer or the sunlight of the spirit within, or that peace on the inside is the source of your life and your happiness forever. And the Course always says, never make a, an external false god. Because when you make an external false god, then you can get depressed, you can get, become addicted, you can have all, all of those uh, problems. Mm.